Hello everyone and I'd like to welcome you once again for joining us in this afternoon's session. My name is Hannah and I am the Recruitment and Marketing Coordinator at the School of Business and Management. For today's session, you will find more information about the marketing and management program that is offered at the School of Business and Management and what makes this program um, quite distinctive. You will also hear from Dr. Darren Mitosis. He is the Senior Lecturer in Marketing, as well as the Program Director for the BSc Marketing and Management Program. And um, Navina Dera, a current student, has also joined us for this session, and you can ask her about um, student life at Queen Mary. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to send these to us using the Q&A functionality, and we will answer these either via chat or on the microphone um, after the presentations. Just to give you um, a brief background about Queen Mary, we are located at Myland, which is um, basically in East London and is one of the most vibrant areas of London. We are very close to Canary Wharf as well as um, the Olympic Park. We are also one of the small numbers of campus universities. This means that all of our facilities are located in one place, which is in Myland. And this includes the accommodation, lecture theatres, as well as all of our um, other facilities, including the library. And these are all walking distance from each other, so you don't have to travel far. We are also a member of the Russell Group Universities, meaning that we are recognized as a world-class and research-intensive university, where you can be assured that the academics teaching your course specialize in the subject area um, that they are teaching. And our London undergraduate students have more than 90% um, from state schools, where 69% of them are also from um, Black and minority, minority ethnic backgrounds, and 57% are first into higher education, making us the most inclusive Russell Group University. And our community is also very diverse. We have around 27,000 students from 162 nationalities, and our members of staff um, consist of 4,600 um, members, and we are actually in the top 20 for international outlook, as stated by Times Higher Education in 2020. And about our core values, the School of Business and Management is an institution founded on progressive values of social justice, sustainability, as well as good governance. And these values make us distinctive and are set around responsible leadership and management in the world today. So the first value is um, social justice. We are a proud ch champion of um, social justice, where equality and diversity are strong themes in our teaching and workplace. We strongly believe that it is the responsibility of business leaders and managers to promote fairness and equality, not just in the workplace, but beyond. Sustainability for us, this, just, this does not just refer to um, the environment and the world but this also applies to the workplace and well-being of the wider community. Our courses at SBM embody this value through our research and innovative approach to learning um, in order to prepare our students for life as well as for work. The third value is promoting good governance. This is where organizations are well managed and run in line with the best practice principles. Our governance values are aligned with United Nations um, Prime, and this stands for the Principles for Responsible Management Education. And we are a member of this um, initiative, which promotes the values for responsible management. We aim to have a positive impact, not just in the way, the work, the way um, we educate our future leaders, but also to have a positive impact as well as contribution to the society. Looking more into the School of Business and Management, we are quite a close-knit and diverse community, and this consists of um, over 3,000 students from over 100 nationalities. So you can actually expect to learn in a diverse place and have an international experience when you can develop your intercultural skills and international mindset. And in terms of ranking, uh, when it comes to quality, Queen Mary is going from strength to strength, and this is reflected on the recent ranking updates. 
So at the moment, we have been recognized by the QS University World Rankings as top 20 um, amongst UK universities for 2021. And we have also climbed up um, six places in the Compete University Guide for 2021. And we also understand that the shift from studying in school to university can be quite challenging, but you can be rest assured that we are um, with you at every step of the way. So we have actually put um, advice and support in place in order to um, support you, as well as assist you in any challenges that you may face. So we have um, we have all of the support in place and uh, we have our academic skills and tutors um, that will help you with your academic writing as well as quant tutors or quantitative tutors who will help you with um, data collection, interpretation, as well as presenting these data. We also offer advising and counselling, and this is available um, both offline as well as online. And we have our dedicated um, world-class careers team um, to help you with employability, as well as all topics in regards to careers. So this can be with writing your CV, finding a job, as well as honing the transferable skills that will make you stand out in the job market. We also have um, quite um, a number, over 100 um, clubs, as well as societies that you can join um, when you um, join us on campus or join Queen Mary in general. So this includes um, entrepreneurship, uh, various sports that you can join, or if there's any um, particular sport or interest that you have been meaning to pursue, you will be able to explore this at the university through the support of Students' Union. Okay, and just to um, illustrate uh, the potential careers destinations that you can um, potentially go into, here are our recent graduate destinations. We've had quite an amazing outcome for our graduates recently, and they have joined quite a diverse field as you can see. What you will gain from your degree program can take you um, in different functions and sectors. And that concludes my introduction to the School of Business and Management. You can also keep in touch with us through our social media and platforms. And our handle is SBMQMUL. And I will also post these um, via chat. And you will be able to communicate with us through these channels. Thank you so much for listening. And without any further ado, I will now hand you over to Darren, who will provide um, more information about the uh, marketing and management program. Over to you, Darren. Thanks, Hannah. Hello, everyone. I think to work through uh, my short presentation today and give you plenty of time to ask questions along the way, we'll structure the presentation around four questions, which I think might be important to you. The first of those is um, why would we study and why would you study marketing and management? The second of those is why aren't I giving an, an old fashioned uh, lecture? The third of those is how is university study different to secondary school or, or college study? And the fourth of those is how is the coronavirus affecting university study? So starting from the top, why study marketing and why study marketing at man and management at Queen Mary? For many students, the most visible aspect of marketing is advertising and other forms of marketing communication, including those on social media. And that's what often draws students to, to the study of the topic. And honestly, that's what first drew me to the study of advert um, marketing. And understanding what makes for effective advertising, how to construct the content of our adverts and how to choose the right channels to distribute those adverts, how to measure the effectiveness of them. They're all um, extremely important and interesting questions for, for marketers. But the study of marketing is much broader than the study of education. And I think that breadth means that it's a great undergraduate degree. And that means your three years of studying marketing provide the foundations for much more than a marketing career. They provide the foundations for being a, an active and effective citizen um, 
making good decisions about your life outside of your profession as well as within the marketing profession. And the reason why I say that is that in order to be good marketers, we need to do some of the following things, and that means we need to study them first. So we need to understand, for example, the psychology of consumers and the collective decision-making of organizations as they make buying decisions. We need to understand the political, economic, social, technological, legal, and ecological context in which buyers and sellers interact. We need to develop skills at reading widely and identifying which parts of what we read are central to our current interests and problems. And that's particularly important both as a citizen and as uh, a manager uh, in, in marketing. We need to develop skills in at analyzing and evaluating competing explanations of the world and choose between them, or indeed to develop our own unique explanations. Again, something that's important in our marketing careers, but something that's important in our daily lives, particularly after we leave university. And finally, we need to develop skills at analyzing data and drawing inferences from that data. Again, true for working out whether an advert is going to be or was effective, but also true for making good decisions in our current uh, crisis that we're all collectively dealing with. All of the skills that I mentioned, and they're just a subset of the, the knowledge and skills that you'll acquire on the way through your degree, help you understand the world around you and help you make better decisions for yourselves, your families, your communities, and given today, um, although not for us, at the ballot box. So a marketing and management degree gives you the opportunity to develop all those skills and they're useful even if you decide not to go into marketing at the end of your degree. And that's what I think makes for a good undergraduate education. I'll pause for a moment and, and if you want, you can uh, type any questions into the chat or come in on the microphone if you wish um, and ask any questions about this, this idea that studying marketing is more than just uh, a pathway to a marketing career. It's a preparation for life in in all its um, complexity that that you'll be forced to face uh, over the next 60 or 70 years of your lives. Any thoughts or questions on that? No. If not, I'm sure that'll occur to you as you as we continue. The second question I had was, why aren't I giving an, an old fashioned lecture? Why these pauses and opportunities for questions? Um, and this leads to our, our third question. So why not uh, an old fashioned lecture? Lectures were ways uh, of transmitting information when people were not literate, or if they were, when there wasn't easy access to books and information. Now all of us have access to all of the information uh, we need relatively easily. And when you get to university, Queen Mary spends millions and millions and millions of pounds ensuring that you have access to the latest research for interest, for instance. We're not short of information the way we were when, when lectures were developed. In addition, our uh, we can all read much faster than anybody can talk. So reading is a much more efficient way to acquire knowledge than having somebody stand in front of you and, and tell you. What is a really useful um, use of time when, when humans come together is to discuss, to have questions and answers, to work on problems together, to listen to alternative perspectives, and help each other evaluate those different perspectives and different ways of doing things. And, and they're great ways of working when we come together. And they're things that don't happen in an old fashioned lecture. And they're things that don't happen quite so easily when we're reading by ourselves. So in, in my classes in particular, and marketing is a uh, is a particularly good subject for doing this, we try and make them as discursive as possible. 
but that also requires students to spend more time studying individually and independently than perhaps you're used to from secondary school or college. And that leads us to, to that second question about, or third question rather, how is university different to secondary school or college? That distinction between acquiring knowledge and doing something with it that I noted a moment ago is at the heart of the difference between school and college and, and university. So the way that you will work at university is you'll spend lots of time doing independent learning to acquire knowledge from textbooks and journal articles. That's reading by yourself, making notes by yourself, and so on. And then the time we have in class and other time that you make to work in groups uh, outside class is where we practice the application, analysis, and evaluation of ideas. And the distinction I use here is in your independent study, you learn about marketing. And when we come together and work in groups, we learn about the practice of marketing. We put those ideas into practice, uh, applying them, but also analyzing and evaluating them to see how good they are and how well they work. And so both in class and uh, amongst uh, the students, there's the requirement to do lots of group work, to have discussions with each other, to to message each other about the readings and activities and, and create a supportive and dynamic cohort. At, at university, particularly in social sciences like uh, business and, and marketing, there's relatively small numbers of classes compared to what you're used to at, at school at college. Um, and that's in order to free up time for you to do the independent work and make sure that you come together in a really focused way in those classes, just as you'll be expected in meetings after you leave to always come to a meeting well-prepared, focused, able to apply and work with others. And so we set up the, the structure in order for you to, to practice that. And it's worth thinking about how coronavirus changes all of this and how some of the mitigations to ensure that that students and and staff don't get get sick complicate um, education at university in our kinds of subjects and i admit they're very different to to the experience for students who have to study uh, engineering in laboratories for instance from my perspective um, your ability to learn and learn to work with the material that students in previous cohorts have studied doesn't change. And my first year students that we're, we're six weeks into the semester now, my first year students, they are asking exactly the same questions. They are struggling with exactly the same transitions. They're worried about the same things and they're having successes with all of the same things that the students did last year and the year before and the year before. And the reason for that is the independent study doesn't change and we still come together for the same amount of time, albeit this time online rather than in a classroom. And we have the same kinds of discussion about the same kinds of material. And your generation of students is very adept at communicating online. So this transition has not been difficult at all for them. Along the way, of course, uh, students are learning some new skills about how to interact with each other and um, how to work at a distance, all of which will be valuable employment skills. So that's my, my short introduction. Uh, are there any questions for me about those last three questions about the dis that were really revolve around the distinction between uh, secondary school and college and university study? and the way that coronavirus changes how you study. So I have two questions here. One is uh, what modules do we study and how many students are there in a, a class and how much independent study are we expected to do? So the modules one uh, is both simple and complicated. Um, we'll, we'll post the link to the page where you can see the list of the the modules that are, are on 
on the the, the rubric um, the the program guide this this year they change a little bit from year to year um, but it's rather than list all of those which are probably a bit meaningless to you um, before you get studied get started in your study better for me to give you a little introduction to the philosophy of how the program works so in the first year you have no choice about what you study and we have picked uh, a set of subjects which introduce you to all of the key themes in business and management that every graduate with a business degree is expected to know a little bit about all of those subjects and they include marketing of course but also economics and accounting um, some some work on on management studies and skills some some work about how organizations function as a whole and, and so on and and that gives you the capacity to understand the business context in which marketing decisions are made and uh, allows you to go into second and third year specializing in marketing across second and third year half of the modules you study each semester are marketing modules that you must study and have no choice about the other half of the modules you study in second and third year are uh, selected by you from a set of constrained electives so we've chosen eight or so subjects each uh, each year and you'll choose four from those and they allow you to give you to have some some breadth and um, diversity in in what you study but without deviating too much from the core of essential marketing and, and management knowledge that you're expected to have as you graduate. So um, hopefully I answered uh, that, that question. The, the second question is um, how much uh, study and independent study are we expected to do? In the UK, we have a, a credit framework um, that's, that's uh, shared nationally and it's actually part of a broader European framework. Um, and different universities implemented in slightly different ways, but the norm is the same across all British universities, that an undergraduate should be spending around 1,200 hours a year on their studies, a mixture between independent work and in-class work. What that works out to be roughly is for slightly longer than term time, you treat your studies like a full-time job if and the students who do very well um, who get the most out of their degree are the ones who do exactly that for the the 12 weeks of term time and then the four to eight weeks outside term time in in revision period and exam period they treat it like a full-time job they work 35 to 40 hours a week and they really, really get the most out of their education. Then we have two more questions that are a bit more about me. Um, the first is, why did I choose to, to teach marketing? So after I finished my undergraduate degree in, in general business, I traveled a bit uh, and then I set up my own business, which uh, eventually became a small Apple dealership a long time ago. And my clients at the time evolved to be mostly small uh, newspapers in country towns. And this was really interesting work for me. I got to travel a little bit um, and there are all sorts of new technologies coming onto the marketplace. And I tried to introduce these new technologies to, to my clients and I, I um, I had resistance. They were relatively conventional and conservative, small and medium-sized businesses. And at some point, I became much more interested in why or why they wouldn't adopt the technology than I was in actually selling it to them. And so running my own business is not a good business model for entertaining that curiosity. So I went back to study um, in Australia, the system's slightly different, but I, I did 
I did some more research-based study and then I came to the UK for my graduate studies and all of that specialized in understanding the uh, adoption of uh, technology. Um, and so that was why I, I got into to researching and teaching marketing was to, to understand why people do or don't adopt technology, both as individuals and in their businesses. Then the next question is, um, can I describe my favorite teaching module? And, and that's tricky because it's really um, more about the dynamic with the class than with um, the, than anything I feel particularly about the subject matter. But I can highlight a, a couple of things that make teaching deeply satisfying for those of us uh, leading the class. I really like when I've taught first years and, and final year students. I taught the same students then, then three years later in their final year. And the reason why I love that is because I see how much the students have developed in that time. And often when writing references for the third years, I'll ask them to bring copies of their work from first year. And many of them say, no, I don't want to show you that. It's too embarrassing. And the reason why it's embarrassing is because by the time they got to third year, even though they often did really well in first year, their skills, their writing, their ability to analyze problems and solve them has developed so much that they look back at where they were um, two and a half or three years before and think, oh no, that's, 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 I don't want to show that to anyone. And that for an educator is a magical feeling um, that, that somebody sees how much they have developed and how their intellectual skills have, have developed. So, so that's at the real heart of it when you, you get the chance to see that development. And so I particularly enjoy teaching the first years for that reason, because even in the 12 or 15 weeks between the first um, week and the, the last week of the first semester, um, the transformation in how many students work is so profound um, and that's very satisfying. Um, then uh, we have another couple of questions. Um, how has it been teaching online and how do I do well in class? So teaching online has, has been a mixed thing. There, there are some real positives um, and we were, we were having some some discussions about this on on Monday uh, with a group of us and there's a across the sector in in the UK there's a consensus that actually a lot of students are doing better and part of the reason for that is that they are spending more time on their studies um, because the opportunities to go out to socialize to have a part-time job have all been reduced and so many more students are spending more time on their studies, which is a fantastic thing. And, and as it should be, because many of us are worried that um, over the last 20 or 30 years, students have year after year spent less time on their university studies and got less out of their three years as a result. So some things like my students' capacity to engage with my module, um, they, they haven't changed. Our ability to have uh, discussions hasn't changed. Um, there's some ups and downs. I, I, I don't get to hear the students quite so often because they prefer asking questions by, by text, um, but they're still asking the questions and they're still thinking about the material. Um, I, it probably doesn't come across, but I like to think I'm reasonably funny and I miss not getting a laugh out of my students in, in the classroom because online we must be much more careful with our, our humor. Um, these things don't carry across quite as well um, when, when we're not in, in, a, in the more intimate teaching circumstances. But we can do things online that we wouldn't be able to do in a classroom. So with social distancing, it's impossible for students to sit and as, as I like to get them to do, work around big sheets of paper, making models of um, processes that they're studying and discussing them together. And of course, that's impossible now. But we can do uh, some of that kind of thing more easily online. Um, and 
I, I guess the other thing that, so that that's my perspective that educationally in our subject, students aren't at a disadvantage. What they do miss out on and what we miss is some of the social interaction that happens. Just falling into to a random conversation um, if we pass each other in, in the corridor or in library square, that those things disappear. On the flip side, it's much easier for me to have a one-to-one -one meeting with uh, my students. And I've had many more of those um, this semester than I would have had um, in previous semesters. So then the final question, how do I do well? Um, doing well is a lot about putting in the hours. So um, putting in the hours, being focused on the work, getting rid of distractions. Um, and unfortunately, lots of the world around us is designed to distract us from, from studying, building our ability to deal with complexity and analyze it and make good decisions about um, our roles and, and the people around us. So that's part of it. That's the, that's the hard work of study. And then there's a whole series of techniques which I, I introduce my students to gently um, about learning how to focus on, on the, the right aspects of the material we study, learning how to filter the important from the not so important, improving note-taking skills, and, and all of those kinds of things which must evolve as you go from being a, a secondary school student into being a, a university student. And we regard first year as a time where you're making that adaptation and we're giving you lots of tips and advice along the way. And there's a question about entry um, and that's really one for Hannah to, to answer. So hopefully I, I managed to answer your questions, taken slightly more time than planned, but uh, these were a fantastic set of questions. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Darren, uh, for answering all the questions and for providing um, our attendees more information in regards to the course. So we will answer um, the additional questions later on after um, the presentation. Great, um, so now I will hand you over to um, Navina, who is one of our current students, and she will share her um, student experience with you. Cheers, and over to you, Navina. Hello, guys. My name is Navina. I'm second year marketing management student, and um, I'm currently the past organizer also. So um, why I chose marketing and management, because um, I was always involved in business, always involved in business sector, and I chose to do marketing because then it teaches me about how to deal with consumers and how to understand their behavior. And it, it, will, it exposed me to different um, market opportunities that I can get involved into, such as advertising and social media, or even like consulting or um, other, other marketing opportunities that may, that may be available. And also it makes me relate to everything that is around me. So for example, that um, business that around me, industries that around me, it makes me do marketing to understand how um, they do their markets and how they persuade people to get their goods and services and, um, how 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 they how they can how they do their different strategies for marketing and what they use to to build their um their marketing identity to make consumers go by them so and it also gives me a chance to connect with a lot of people so um have it, doing marketing and if you're doing like advertising or even like um doing part-time jobs or any opportunities it just and gets you to involve with loads of people to know what um you know to know who's the target market and what you can bring to them in the future so that's the reason why i chose marketing and what I enjoy most about my program so in first year i enjoyed marketing the module because it it taught me the different types of marketing 
principles and strategies and how and how the basics of marketing that can be used in future. And for me now in second year, it's very interesting because then it can make me think of new ideas and it can make me think about who is my audience and target market. So when I'm doing my assignments and my more like in my modules, so for example, for services marketing is one of my module. It teaches me how, who's my target market and like if I'm doing if I'm coming up with a business idea it teaches me who is my buyers and how to um, provide them with the different types of um, different types of goods and services and it show it teaches me how to how to prom it teaches me how different companies also so like when I'm doing my services it teaches me to research about different companies to see different ways they put the, they promote their products and services and how they persuade their buyers to buy their products and how they advertise because it's very important to know about um, how to do how to advertise and how to get your or your consumers to buy the products because if you know that then it's it's good to 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 um sell the products and get um to expand the growth of the business and everything so i think marketing is good because then it it teaches you new skills it teaches you how to communicate the way to your target market it, it teaches you how to how to find your tar target the target market and to understand your consumers in, in what they want. So that's the most interesting thing. And what is it like to study marketing management is like, it, it, it is interesting and fun because then it's creative and it makes you think outside of the box. So for one of my modules this year, I have to like come up with business and it makes me think of my box because then I have to be creative. I have to be attractive. I have to be like to make the consumers get my product. So it really makes me think about, you know, if it makes me think about a real life business, if I'm doing and what I can do to make consumers buy my product. And so that makes me think out of the box. So that makes me come into first year and think that, okay, this is what I've learned. So I can, uh, so I can use it in my second year. So, um, so this is how, so the skills will like to, will allow you to sell um, your products and how to promote your product, which is like how you would do in real life. And it allows me to work in teams and understand different marketing aspects about a product promotion and how different teams will market their product or service. So like working in teams of like with different students, it would, um, it would make me understand how different marketing aspects about a product. So like, for example, um, working in teams with my friend at the moment, everything is online. So like if I'm working in teams with my friend, like different people be doing different, um, different, different products. So this will make me think that, okay, you know, um, they will be promoted in this way. They will be doing it in this way. So it will be think, it will make me think about different marketing aspects. And so overall, um, the modules that I'm doing now in second year, they, they teach me how the real world of work will be. And in terms of using like SWOT and pestle analysis, and the, the most one is the segment and pull positioning because then you have to create a third. So what I'm learning at the moment is how to, to, to create a business that is different from your target, how would you position your business different from your target consumer? So that's very interesting. That is where your creativity, creativity comes in and that's where you have to think out the box. So I think at one time, I, I think in my opinion, why I did marketing is because it's very important to like attract your consumers and see what other consumers, what other businesses are doing that you can do way better than them them by you know using the stp which is um which is very important to do so um the stp is like segment targeting and pos positioning so if you have that in your business and you use that it will be really good so those are the main for marketing so um, I will be speaking about my about a little bit about myself. So how marketing helps me in terms of societies. So in my first year, I used to go for I used to 
to like a social media rep for my social society. And this year I, I wanted to go into marketing because then I wanted to get kind of like a more experience to see how marketing works into societies. And right now I'm doing like the marketing rep and this allows me to meet different different kinds of people from different universities and out of university and it allows me to show me my marketing um skills through social media so this allows me you know to do the target consumer speak to them see what events they're looking forward to so um this is where i'm using my skills and i'm also a social media rep for one of the society and this allows me to be creative to make posters to attract them to join events so this is um this is the other role i'm doing for one of the rep and for treasure this allows me to like communicate with people and learn how businesses should do their finance in terms of like so when how to budget and do their finances so that's also important in marketing also and lastly i will be giving some tips about um joining universities so um so one tip would be to make new friends as it's diverse. So Queen Mary is very diverse and it's very easy to make friends from different um, different courses because you know you get to know them, you get to know more about their course and you can share you can share more about your course and it will be more interesting. And it's good to make friends because you don't know what will happen in the future and you know it, you may need them or it might help you you know, to um, build that relationship. So it's good to um, have friends, like diverse of different friends. And I would say get involved in activities and opportunities at SPM. So SPM has loads of opportunities such as Qtaster, where, you know, you um, you meet different companies. So I have done Qtaster last year and it has given me a great experience to meet different companies. Um, that, that are involved in marketing that makes me think that yes I want to do this I want to be I want to go into this sector and all that so going into marketing is uh, going doing q test is really good if you are in marketing because then it helps you to know which which sector or which company you would want to work when you're finished with your th with, when you're finished with uni and the careers department is also good because I would say that when you're in first year, you have that time to go and get your CV and cover letters sorted and to do some type of internships because it's really good if you do an internship in 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 first year because then you get that experience and you get that knowledge of what you want to do in like second and third year. You get that experience of how marketing is is going to be so i would say that um carriers and carriers team also has good opportunities that you can get involved they do have also internships they also have like opportunities for students to get involved and another tip would be that um always ask lectures for help so if you're confused about anything or you do not uh, uh, understand anything I would that never wait for last minute. I would say to go to their um, office hours or go to their um, to their to their availability time to ask questions or just pop an email and say that I do not understand this because you do not want to wait on a last minute and you're having issues and you do not understand. And I would say to always um, ensure that you have the resources needed for the course, or you can always contact SPM because if you have the resources, you can understand it clear. Always ensure that you have access to the library, to the books and everything. And I would also say to read lectures before class and be prepared to know what will be taught. So I would say that um, read the lecture notes before you attend the webinars because you would have a more understanding of how to interact with the questions being asked because the more you, you attend the webinars, the more you read the lectures, the more you understand, the more you would you would have that idea of what you're expected to learn and what you're expected to um, 
to get at the end of the year. So you would say that, um, you know, I'm interested in this and you would get an understanding of what has been taught. So then you wouldn't have a problem in second or third year because once you understand everything, like once you go to lectures and once you go to webinars, you all the time, you wouldn't have issues in your exams. Or you won't have issues in like second or third year when you're doing modules. And I would say to always take, um, always take break when you like always take break. Don't stress yourself. So don't do like if you're reading lectures or so. Don't take, don't be, don't take like um, do them constantly. Just take breaks in between because um, your mind will just be overloaded and you can't remember too much. I would say take break. And lastly, I would say be organized and be prepared all the time because. Um, it will be best for you to to show to showcase your skills and um, you know to have great opportunities in the future. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the Q and A. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Navina, um, for being so insightful. Um, that was really great. And. Uh, we actually have quite a lot of questions from our audience. And um, one of them is, uh, let's see, what's the split between exams and coursework? Um, Darren, perhaps you can answer this. Yeah, so this is a, a question that always slightly perplexes me. Um, a better way to think about this is each of us um, designs assessment to test the knowledge and skills that you're expected to develop during that module. And before our assessment is approved and issued to you, there are various committee structures where our rationale and explanation and the questions are considered by our colleagues um, so that we get a second and a third opinion on both the form of the assessment and the specific questions. Sometimes exams are the best way or the better way to uh, assess uh, something, i.e. timed assessment like an exam and, and they're done online now with with a longer time period but it's still that idea of you don't know the questions in advance you have a limited amount of time to answer them for different kinds of uh, material then uh, assignments with relatively long time um, to to contemplate the material and work on it is a better mode of assessment for those mm -hmm. desired learning outcomes so the we wouldn't expect, for instance, if you were studying performance uh, or drama to have many exams because that seems like a bad way to test whether somebody can, can sing or dance or produce a sculpture. Um, on the other hand, business graduates are expected to be able to roll up to meetings with clients, having prepared for the meeting, but not being terribly sure exactly what questions the client is, is going to ask but being very sure about the space uh, in which they'll ask the questions, that the material they'll ask it about. So you shouldn't worry about the forms of assessment. Rather, you should see particular forms of assessment as the best way of assessing what you've been asked to, to study. And along the way, of course, we make sure you get practice at the different modes of assessment so that we're sure we're not testing your ability at the mode of assessment rather than the material that's being as, uh, uh, assessed. Hopefully that makes sense and you can pop another question into the chat if it didn't and we can come back to that. Okay, great. Thank you so much um, for enlightening us on that. And uh, we can now proceed to the next question. Um, the next one is, hi Navina, are you a member of any societies or clubs at uni? Yeah, so I'm I am like part of clubs and societies, but I'm part of committee members for three societies. 
at the moment. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for answering that. And with the next question, perhaps we can um, give a perspective um, of a student as well as a lecturer. So the next one is, how is it easy is it to approach teachers if I'm having difficulties with the teaching materials? Um, Darren, would you like to go first? Yeah, so I, I, I think that's pretty straightforward and we're quite an approachable school. Um, mostly this works um, with uh, set office hours each week. So I have uh, somewhere between three and six uh, no, sorry, between an, uh, an between two and four hours uh, a week where I say to students, during this time, you can just pop in. And that's true whether we're on campus or doing it online. Um, and then I, I set up meetings of 15 minutes to half an hour with students outside that time. If it's going to be a longer conversation or it's something of a bit more personal, nature that's interfering with their studies and we need to to work on the study plan to manage that um, how productive those meetings are depends on how well the students have prepared for them and how well they've let us know what the meetings are about um, so this is a, a classic co-production example where we get better and better at working with each other the more we know about each other. Um, and I have some some students who are obviously very good at this right at the beginning. And, and one came to me and we spent an hour and a bit together, but she had seven or eight very well structured, very thoughtful questions. And we just systematically worked through those and, until she was happy with them. Um, and I should imagine that it will be quite a few weeks before uh, she comes back for another visit. Other students I set up regular appointments with um, because they are struggling with different kinds of things and have different different levels of preparation um, and experience at dealing with them. So I, I think generally we're, we're quite approachable and um, it's a great learning path for both us and students to to have these meetings or email communication where we get to understand and help each other better with the learning process. Navina? Yeah, so I think um, working like um, having going to office hours is very important if you're not sure of anything or you're just confused. So I would say that um, like when you're listening to the lectures or anything, just make notes at that time and then it would be easier for you to ask because then you do not want to just go and not like it's, it's not a, um, a productive one and then you know in last you're like um I forgot to ask this question and all that and then on the last minute you're, str you're struggling so then I would say that before um before going to office hours to do that and if you can't make if you can't make the office hours given on that time you can always try and request a different time Okay. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, thanks to you both. And we actually have two more minutes until this session ends and we have three questions. So we're only going to answer um, the remaining questions. And if our attendees um, need um, any assistance or have any follow up questions, they can contact us. I will be typing in the um, SBM inquiries email um, in the chat. So the next question is, is it easy to make friends when learning online? Um, Navina, perhaps you can answer this. So um, I would say some some sort, yes, like if you're attending webinars and you're in that like, teams, you can just, when, while talking, you can just say, um, are you doing the same course? Uh, what course are you doing? And then you can, you can just say, um, like, can we, like you know you can just say can we be friends or like um or you know just speaking like if you just if you just seen the person the same like if the person is working with, with you in the group then you can just like you know ask them um are you doing the same course and like is it possible if you can make if you can be friends and um you know like to share to share our um you know to speak about 
about work and all that. So I think starting with webinars would be good. And also to join societies would be also good. And uh, um, coming to past sessions also would be good because with past sessions, you meet different kind of course students and it would be good to make friends. So I would say to start with webinars and start with um, like joining societies, not all, maybe like one society and see how it goes. And um, yeah, coming to past sessions would be good also. Great, thank you so much. And our next question is, I want to pursue a career in marketing. What advice can you give me? So maybe I can pick up this one and, and yes, the next please. one quickly. So um, successful, uh, successful careers, including in marketing, are really about your capacity to solve problems for your clients or your bosses. The more complex the problems you can solve, the more successful will be your career. Um, so the way to approach your university studies is this is developing the knowledge base and the skill base in order to solve successively more complex problems. And go from simple marketing problems to much more complex ones involving multiple jurisdictions and cultures and product groups and brands and so on and so forth. So you just step gently through the process taking building your capacity to to solve those problems building the technical skills to do that in the knowledge base alongside of that you pick up a range of what we call soft skills communicating with people and that's where Navina's advice about um, working actively and participating in, in the seminars is important because that's where you're honing your capacity to listen and to explain to others and then during your summers, you pick up these internship opportunities to give you a, a wider range of experiences. And then the last question, what resources do you recommend to help me succeed in, in the class? In, in the narrow sense, you can be very successful just by focusing on what we give you to study. So that, as I said earlier, is, is largely about your time. Um, being organized, as uh, Navina talked about in her presentation, being organized, working through the, the material systematically. The, the only thing, the only resource in addition you need is a computer to work on and to buy uh, the textbooks that are sometimes needed for, for class. Um, in that sense, it's a very narrow set of, of things that you need to, to succeed. You, you don't need to spend money on anything else. You don't necessarily need to spend time on anything else. You come to us when you, you struggle or have something to celebrate and, and we can, can help you overcome the struggle and, and extend the stuff that you find, find easy. I hope I've answered that question. I'm, I'm not wasn't quite sure what you meant by resources. Great, I think you definitely have answered the question. Um, great, so those are all the um, questions that we have received for this session. And we have sort of overlapped by a couple of minutes. And I would like to thank our um, guests or our attendees for being very interactive with us and for Darren as well as Navina for joining us for um, in this particular session. So um, we are now concluding the session and we hope to meet all of you um, at Queen Mary University in the next academic year. Thank you so much. Thanks, a fantastic set of questions, everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cheers, thank you, bye. Thank you, thank you everyone.